Good morning, everybody. I know I have. Tone it in. Yeah, that's a bit better, I think. Yeah. Thanks. Ready to go? Ready to go. All right, cool. Uh, good morning, everybody. Um, welcome to day two, as Matt said earlier. Um, my name is Martin Hickey, and I'm a developer at IBM, and I'm also a core maintainer in, um, in the Helm project. So I'd like to talk to you today about library charts, which is um, new capability we introduced in uh, Helm 3. So you're probably all looking forward to Helm 3, so it's good to we're uh, being able to talk about some of the capabilities leading into it uh, before it goes GA. So just brief kind of uh, agenda on what we're going to look at. We're going to first of all talk about co common charts, which are already available in Helm 2. And then we're going to start talking about library charts in Helm 3. Uh, I'll do a demo to, um, to show the capability, and then we'll just uh, wrap up on it. So, probably a lot of you have seen uh, this chart before. Um, it just shows, I suppose, a common scenario you might have in Helm, where you have taken your application and you might have broken it down into subcomponents. And these subcomponents are um, shown here uh, by the subcharts, subchart one to subchart three. And what I'm trying to get across here is that. Sometimes when you break these subcomponents down, you can have commonality across the subcomponents. So if we look at subchart one, it's got a deployment manifest and it's got a service manifest. Um, and in that deployment manifest, you can see some of the attributes or the properties of the manifest, uh, like the metadata and the spec. And I've highlighted them in brown. They're common with some of the um, metadata and spec in subchart three. Uh, the difference here in the deployment you can see in subchart one, it's going using a volume, um, which subchart three doesn't have. And you can see around the service manifest that the metadata here e and the spec are the same. So in this situation, what normally happens is we basically create the different subcharts and we have um, duplication across some of the subcharts. Now, why would you have a situation like this? So, I don't know, maybe subchart one is possibly um, a subchart uh, defined in a database. Subchart three might be for um, a web server or something like that. And you're, you're looking at it saying, right, this is great. You've divided up into different components. You're using your umbrella chart to deploy it. But when you look at this, you say, wouldn't it be great if we could avoid this duplication uh, if we could implement uh, a dry principle so that at least we'd have it in one central point and we made changes then and uh, when we include afterwards then we're not doing it in more than one location. In Helm 2 we have such a situation, we have such capability to do this and this is the common chart. So the common charts concept came from a chart developed by uh, Matt Butcher and probably other people as well in it and uh, he made this available in the incubator um, repo in the Helm repository. And what it does is it gives you some basic capabilities of um, uh, Kubernetes uh, resources like your deployment, your service, um, your ingress, etc. And what it does is it allows you to pick up those capabilities and then override or extend uh, the differences that you may have from the base capability. So you can see here in the diagram that now the subcharts now extend also from uh, the common chart here at the bottom uh, in yellow. And you can see here that I highlighted uh, uh, two things on it. Uh, first one is common.deployment and the other then is common.service. And in this situation, these are keys. So they're an example of a key where you define the particular capability in this situation for common.deployment. What you're doing here is you're, you're basically defining a basic uh, deployment resource object uh, manifest and the same for the servers. And what you're doing then in subchart one, you can see now you're basically including this. Um, and then all what you're doing is adding the volume because this is the extra capability you want. And then you can see in subchart three, the same thing again, you're including the key for common.deployment and common.service. 
So what you're doing here is you're centralizing, you're doing reuse, and you're um, also um, uh, enabling the, uh, the dry pattern. So this can be very handy in this situation. So this common chart, uh, this common chart does not contain um, uh, release artifacts. It contains um, definitions uh, for the different types that you can include then afterwards. So when we looked at this capability in the, communi in the community, we said a couple of issues kept coming up. Um, one of them was, and you'd see from time to time, is that somebody forgot it was a library chart and decided to install it, okay? And because we had no capability to distinguish between a common chart, the, the only way we distinguished between a common chart and uh, an application chart was if there was release artifacts in it. Okay, so if it had a release artifact, then yeah, you could install it. If not, it was a common and it should only be includable. But we had no check-in or verification of that. So, so that was one issue that came up. Also, probably an ugly side effect is when you install the chart, it, it tried to deploy it and failed. So people come back and say, look, why did this try to install? It came back with a message which I showed in a while around, I think, no objects available, which wasn't very explanatory, and then you, you're stuck with it deployed, and then when you uninstall it, actually puts quite a, quite a kind of a side effect ugly message back out again. So all in all, it was, it was a bit untidy, it wasn't very good for UX. And uh, also too that if you had a chart with a series of definitions in it, and you only wanted to use them as definitions, or for example, you had an application chart with nice definitions in it, which you didn't want to deploy the artifacts, you couldn't do that either, because once the release artifacts were in the chart, they would get deployed. So for, we decided then in Helm 3 to make the common chart a uh, first class citizen. Uh, we named them library charts. And how we went about this was, we said, the key here was to add a type into the charts, okay? So by default, the type is taken as application for backwards compatibility. Um, but going forward, uh, and I'll show it in a minute, uh, for the, uh, now that we've bumped up the API version of the charts to V2, uh, you now have the ability to add a type field in the chart.yaml, and this type field then distinguishes between your application and your library, and they're called those names, um, application and library. Wha what it means here now is, when you define a chart as library, then that chart is only includable and will not be installed. If you try to install it, it will basically put back an error message to say library charts are not installable, so and it doesn't try to deploy it into Helm either. Uh, what this means then is it gives, you, it gives you these capabilities then that also if you have an application chart with nice definitions in it that you just want to use, but you don't want to deploy, you can set its type to uh, library, and then basically the, no, the artifacts won't be deployed. And this is the same with dependencies as well. Um, and also, obviously, it's staying backwards compatible, so if you've been using common charts, you have your own type of common charts, so you can still work away as you want. Uh, but I, I suppose we'd suggest as you go down the road, maybe try and bump it up and, and try and use the new capability. So I think we will take this for a test drive, and we'll see how we get on. So what I want to do in this demo is, um, I want to basically, first of all, show the V2 capability and how you use it, and probably a lot of you here know how to use this already, uh, with a simple example, but then how you can bring in the subtleties of the V3 capability to give you uh, that extra verification and usability all, all around, okay? So what we're going to do is, like all good people, we're going to start off with our out-of-the-box scaffold chart, because we don't want any fancy charts here. Now, if this fails, obviously, uh, I'll try not to pull something out of the hat, but for the moment, we'll say, but, and we'll probably have a talk today, and in, uh, please come along to talk today uh, about the Helm community and getting involved in Helm community as a contributor, and if you're a contributor already, to extend on it um, later on in the day with Taylor and myself, because we're going to talk about this and some of the tools and stuff and ways to get going, okay? So a scaffold chart is always a great way to get going and, and kick something out. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to show you what the templates look like if you haven't seen it before for a scaffold chart. So the scaffold chart basically is um, a simple 
Nginx uh, server that's deployed, and it's a nice way to test stuff and, and charts. So you can see here, this is, yeah, okay. We can see here that uh, it's pretty standard. You can see here that the image here, it includes an image. That image is defined as, um, as uh, an Nginx image inside in the values file, and basically it just deploys a pod with the, the server running in a container, okay? I'll show the service as well, the server as well, the service as well, sorry. Okay, same thing, pretty standard, you know, um, uh, defining the ports, etc., like that. Now, um, so there is a possibility that you may deploy a series of, of different services that might be the same, um, have the same uh, type of, of uh, code that you have in the manifest. And what we want to show here is that if you take the common chart and the base chart and you define your own common charts, how you can simplify on this. So what I'm going to do is, rather than see me uh, miserably type it in front of you, I'm going to uh, pull across um, uh, ones that I did earlier, okay? Uh, and uh, after the my typing so far, you know why I've decided to do that, so. Uh, Okay, and I'm also going to do the same with the service file, okay? Okay, now when I look at the files again, you can see now in this situation, uh, what I've done here is I've included the template from the common, from the common chart, okay? So if you get a chance, go out to the the incubator repo and have a look at it. Um, so I've included its common service, and what it means is then, all I have to do is define its service, and basically I pick up all the uh, default code like I had in there earlier. And when I do the deployment, I can see the same thing. Okay, and again, I include what I talked about, the key that's defined. So this is the key that's defined in the base uh, definition template for common dot deployment. That is the key, and that that I include it here by calling template, or you can also call it include as well. And uh, you can see here that basically I pick up all the common code, and then all that I change here is I decide to uh, change a replica set and use the value out of my own replica set. Okay. So what we want to do now is. Um, we basically, so in Helm 3, we made a few changes uh, around the charts and, and, the, and that's why we bumped the API version. So one of these things to remember is what I mentioned earlier, the type field, okay? You can see its application here and the API version is bumped up to V2. One other thing we did was we um, removed the, um, now it's still backwards compatible but in from V3 going on, we, uh, you can now define your, um, your dependencies inside in the chart.yaml file, and uh, we're pretty much deprecating the requirements file. Now, as I said, V, v charts from Helm V2 will still work, so it still accepts the requirements, etc. But I suppose our suggestion would be going forward to basically upgrade if you can on that. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to um, add a little... Uh, helper file here to avoid me typing like crazy. Okay, so what we've done here is, you've seen this before, this is, um, this is your dependence you're including here, if you haven't seen it, you give it the name of the uh, particular um, chart that you want to include, and then where it's coming from, in this situation it's coming from the Helm repo, um, the Helm uh, repo, uh, incubator repo, and then the version that I want, okay? So this means now I'm going to use the, the uh, common library. I'm going to include it and pick up the capabilities of the definitions then as well. Uh, one last thing I have to do, and this is just um, something bec in uh, the scaffolded chart in V3. We just changed how you include the image. So it now uses the app version uh, for the image for the Nginx as opposed to the tag for before. Unfortunately, the common uh, chart is only uh, it's still using the old tag. 
and uh, I haven't got around to change it. So it's something we probably do for, for V3. But so I have to just do one work around a minute. Uh, so I just need to add the tag here. And I'll instead of calling it stable, and that was one of the reasons why we came away from it as well, that just to call something stable wasn't a great idea. We've gone specific on the type on it. So I'm going to use 116.0, and that's off the top of my head. So if it doesn't work, obviously, we should have used stable. But all right, we'll see how we go on that. Um, OK, so where am I now? So right, we have the chart. We have included the common library. We've used its uh, definitions. And now what we're going to do is we're going to render it and see does it actually work, OK? And if it works, great. If it doesn't, we'll just say, look, you know, it could have worked. Uh, but uh, we're going to go with that it works, OK? Yeah, you please clap, yeah. Uh, we'll call it demo because I have an imagination. Uh, and uh, we'll go dry run. So if you haven't used dry run for, it's a nice way. It doesn't deploy or install out into your cluster. All it does, it does the rendering right through so you can tell if there's any errors in it or not, OK? It's a nice way of um, uh, debugging. Uh, OK, so, uh, right, brilliant. So I've included the dependency, but I forgot to, um, to update the dependency so that it pulls down the chart into the um, lovely. Oh, yeah, sorry, I forgot to. Uh, no one should have seen. You did not see that stack trace. <laughs> you will not be allowed to leave the room if you mention that stack trace. Only a joke. Maybe. I think maybe that's a PR for somebody there if they want to raise it, okay? <laughs> Just a hint. Uh, right, so now we should be able to run. <laughs> I just love di live demos. You always type the wrong thing, but you know we found a PR. <laughs> right. So if we have a quick look at this, how am I doing on time? I'm not doing so bad. What time does this finish at? Okay, I'm doing all right. Yeah. Sorry, I'm probably speaking in really fast Irish accent, so I apologise in advance. Uh, well, it's a bit late now, but <laughs> there you go. <laughs> all right. So uh, right, let me get back to what I was doing. Uh, Okay, so you can see here that the service uh, manifest has been rendered out, so it's picked up all the um, definitions that were inside in the, uh, the common service file, um, and then when we go to the deployment, the same thing has happened as well. So you can see here that it's pulled in this capability and the whole lot. So this capability, as you know, is already in V2, so you can use it away. Um, so what I'm going to do now is just to make sure because people might say, well, maybe that thing didn't deploy. And maybe you're right. Uh, let's see. Let's oh, yeah, sorry. Actually, let's deploy it first. That might be a good idea. OK. Let's give it a quick test and see if it worked. OK. Let's open the port, and let's see if we can access it. Um, this is the one where you say to everybody, oh, yeah, use the scaffold chart. It's, it's so easy, and it works. And then you try to connect it, and it won't work, so uh, hopefully. Uh, yay. So there's your uh, landing page for Nginx. So that sh just shows we've deployed it or whatever. So what we want to have a quick look at now is um, around the common chart. So what I did was I pulled down the common chart a while ago and extracted it out. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you when you try to install it at the moment, what happens, OK? So and just make sure that we have all right, we have our demo in there now. OK, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to install common now. Um, You'll notice, too, in Helm tree, you don't need to use dash dash name anymore. Uh, you can just give it Helm install the name where, uh, wherever your chart is, OK? Also, on top of that as well, um, you have to specify a name or specify a uh, generate name. So it doesn't generate a name on the fly anymore. And the reasons for the change in this is for um, standardization with the, uh, the other um, uh, queue commands, basically. So uh, yeah, 
So if you see that and you come up with something, go, why doesn't that work anymore? There you go. Probably mostly in production anyway. Um, when you're in production, you're not really going to give it ad hoc names like uh, whatever it was, Funny Cat or whatever, <laughs> the different ones where I can't remember. Uh, there were some good ones, though. Okay. All right. Oh, man. Where? Oh, wrong place. Here we go. Okay. As you can see, this isn't fabricated, obviously, because you know if you really had this down to a T, you wouldn't be making these little mistakes. So here we go. All right. So when you try to install it, you get this lovely. Ma oh, <laughs> shoot! Here we go. This is what happens when you go testing the night before. <laughs> All right. I'm going to have to reverse here. Everyone, close their eyes there for a minute. <laughs> we love it when things happen. Uh, here we go. So pretend you didn't see what happened a minute ago there. Uh, so. When you try to install your common chart or your chart that has no release artifacts in it, and let's actually show that actually before I do it. Um. You can see here what we have is a series of um, uh, template definitions in here. Um, we can look, we look just actually, we look, well, we have time, we look at the, um, the deployment one quickly. Oh. Okay, so you can see here that um, it's a uh, definition and uh, that basically is defined, uh, defining the, the uh, deployment. It's also including um, Another ID here, common on metadata. So there's a metadata file out there that defines the different metadata, the labels ex and the name, etc., like that. And even that file then goes into another file for the specific name, and like you'd have on in under helpers, you know, looking at the length of the file, full name, or whatever like that. Uh, you also see here that you have yeah, common name down here for the naming, and then you also have a container one. Now I'm not going to go into all of them. Please have a look at them yourself, but you get the idea that the definitions are, and there's a lot of modularization here and including basically of the different definitions, okay? So let's jump out of this, and let's see if I can pull off an install. Uh, all right. Okay, so hands up here who knows what that message means. Besides Matt Fisher, obviously, at the back. Yeah. I swear, if, if, do you know what I mean? If you had a slow Monday morning after a nice weekend, you would not know what was going on there. So that's, th I call that the message of death, really, sometimes, you know, because people come back and go, well, what's that? You know, and it's grand when you know what it is, but when you don't know what it is, it's, you know, it's not friendly, okay? Also, what it does lovely for you, yay, it deployed it. No, sorry, failed. Um, there we go, all right. Not very useful. So let's, let's take it out, okay? So in, um, in Helm 3, the Helm delete command has now become Helm un uninstall. And what I like about it is, is and Mac did this, is it also removes everything. So it doesn't leave the metadata hanging around. Everything goes by default. There is a flag in there for the people who love this hanging around uh, for you to hang on to it if you want, okay? But by default, it goes out. So just, just be wary of that in case you want the things to hang around. So let's uninstall it. All right, with a lovely, another message, which doesn't tell you a whole lot either. Um, and let's go back to um, the chart file. And let's, let's now add the type into it. Mm -hmm. type. All right. Sorry? Uh-huh. Good point. Yep. Thank you. Okay. Let's go install now. Uh, okay. All right. So I think that's a lot better. Um, but it allows us to extend going forward as well because we now have basically a type or an object or concept of what our charts are, if they're application or common, or if someone comes up with a, another type again down the road, because everyone has great imaginations out there, so we're bound to find another type at some stage. So, yeah, please go with it. So, right, let's jump back to finish off, because we're nearly there, are we? Uh,
Okay. Right. To summarize, um, the main thing here is what we want to do is because we see the value of library charts, and even though they started out as an initial, I suppose, concept from, from Matt Butcher and putting it out there and saying, right, this is a nice way where you can basically define things uh, and reuse afterwards and basically respect the dry principle. Um, we saw that in Helm 2 that would be not able to distinguish between the different uh, type of chart uh, just just made things a bit more difficult and made the uh, uh, UX a lot, um, a lot more less to use, um, not as easy to use. So what we decided then was we put in the type, as I mentioned earlier, you can have library or you can have application. By default, it's application. Um, also, too, that your, your common charts are includable, they're not installable, and um, that you use them like you, you want to use any type of uh, chart by another chart, you, you, you include it in its dependency. Um, so, so that's all for me, thanks. Um, so you can contact me there if you have any questions, or uh, do we still have time for questions? Is it five two or? Okay. So just reach out to me. Uh, come up and talk to me. Uh, I'll be around. Um, and if you have any questions, like I've shown a few things around uh, Helm Tree in this as well. So if you have any questions around Helm Tree, come around and talk to any of us. Um, and uh, yeah, thank you.